Hello everyone, and welcome to a part three of our G3X by Garmin slash working title slash Sobo slash Microsoft tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can customize the display to make it do kind of what you want to do, as well as sort of kind of the hidden functions that are built within it. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at those in a moment. So first things first, um, I'm not going anywhere today, so I'm actually going to pull the mixture out. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Virtual fuel can wait and you don't have to listen to that whole drone. You know me. So one of the things we're going to take a look at is how you can modify this display. There's a lot of different ways to do it, depending on what you're trying to achieve here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how you can adjust the HSI. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on this. And now when you do this, this is going to bring up the PFD adjustment pages. All right, that's going to make me crazy. Sorry, everybody. You're going to have to listen to the engine running the whole time. Oh, well. So one of the things we have here is we can select our navigational source, which is going to be this one. But we also have the option to create some inset windows. Uh, for those of you who are fans of the G3000, G1000, you know all about this already. So what I can do is I can press this little arrow, and it's going to give me a bunch of different choices. For one, I can select Map. Uh, when I press that button, of course, and nothing happens. And don't panic. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set this one to traffic because science. I'm also going to add a bearing pointer. I'll go ahead and say uh, GPS mode. You can see there's no data for that right now. Come over here. I'll go ahead and set this to the nearest airport. And you can see it automatically puts a little arrow to the nearest airport. Again, we're turning junk on to show you how you can get rid of it, kind of a thing like that. Uh, you know what? I'm in here. I'll go ahead and set some minimums. We're already past the minimums. And then when I press the enter key, you will notice this display is now decked out. It is all cluttered and confusing and nasty looking. Not in a bad way. What you'll observe here is you can see very clearly from our little mini map, by the way, if you need to, uh, you can click on that mini map and that will bring up the big version. If you want to kind of hide this one, you can actually hit the back key. And you'll notice I can zoom in and out real quickly and it's real tempting to click and drag, but you'll notice you can't click and drag. Uh, it's just going to give you a little display here. And again, this mini map is adjustable and we'll get there in a few moments. Over here on the right, you can see my traffic display. Uh, no traffic today because um, I obviously want to record YouTube videos. You try to keep the frame rate up. Someday I'll get a new computer. So the cool thing here, of course, is you can see all this stuff has sort of appeared on our screen just to kind of keep things busy for us if that is something we wanted to achieve. If we wanted to get rid of this, of course, we could click there again. And then, of course, we could come in here. We could clear the minimums. We'd go back here again. Oh, we can shut these offsets, or insets, I should say. Offsets are pretty fun, too. Kind of clear all that stuff out to kind of hide it. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on the right here is this more options page. And this is going to give you a bunch of new choices we have. Uh, one of the ones you're going to notice here is we can turn to the wind vector. Remember the correct answer here. Oh, where's my correct answer? There's no option three. No, that's perfectly fine. Oh, you also see that we have our turn bank angle indicators. That's referring to this guy right here. Oh, you can actually turn that on. You can actually shut that off if it's something that bothers you. You can also change the orientation and they can actually have an auto track, oh, which is kind of fun because it'll snap that way. You'll see what I mean when you try it. We also have the ability, of course, to adjust what this little knob actually does, uh, which I find kind of interesting. Uh, most people will keep it from course and barometric pressure, but you can also change it to that mode. And again, oh, we don't can't see that because we have our scroll list at the moment. But one of the things you'll notice is if I scroll this list all the way to the bottom, you see how the little blue options change? You can also click and drag with your finger here. You'll notice if we go all the way down that you'll have a synthetic vision option. Now, if you shut that off, this will go ahead and turn that display off and save a couple frames per second there. If that's something you need there. You can also turn that one back on. And I love it's got the little flight path vector here. If you actually see it, we can't see it because we're not in the air. You would also have traffic displayed, but that's not something that we have available yet, which is kind of unfortunate for us. Now, the key thing here, if you're looking for an answer for how to do this, I also like how you can't change the PFD presentation. Aw, you can get really old-fashioned with like digital gauges if you're so inclined. Uh, of course, this is going to be the absolute basics of modification. But that's just getting started for what we can do with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some more. I'm going to come down to the menu button. Now, if you press the menu button one more time, it's going to bring up a screen that looks like this. Uh, this is kind of the big menu. This is why you're paying huge dollars for this G3X here. And one of the things you'll notice I can click a drag here and there's actually quite a bit of stuff going on here. You'll notice flight controls. Don't push that button. That's what flight controls are. So keep that in mind. Uh, you'll have all your radios. Again, you have access to all those across the top. You'll also notice you have your chance binder. You got the button for the top for that ready to go. You have a couple other components here that are kind of nice. Again, none of these are going to work right away. So what I will do real quickly is I'll just quickly toss in a flight plan for us. Uh, actually, why am I even working so hard for this? Boop, boop, boop. We're going to go to flight plan mode. We're going to go ahead and say rad waypoint. Uh, let's see here. We're just going to keep it super simple for today's flight. Enter. Sounds good to me. Boop. Now we have a flight plan just to make our life a little bit simpler. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my main page, press the menu twice, go ahead and drag down, and you'll see there's a couple other options. One option that we have, of course, is we have a backlight intensity. Uh, if you want to, you can actually set this to automatic, and what it will try to do is dim this display if it gets too bright. A manual mode, of course, if you're so inclined, you can make this a lot darker. Personally, at night, 
you're going to crank this thing way, way, way down. But again, it is up to you. What is that comfortable for you? We can press it back. The best button here, though, is the setup button. And the reason I love this one is there's so many good controls here. Uh, one of the ones you already know is this one, because we saw this one already. But one of the cool things here is, of course, uh, with everything, is that uh, we have no scroll. Uh, you can see where, kind of where the buttons are. If we were in bad turbulence, we can highlight and press the enter button to press the enter key here. And again, there's a lot of options we don't simulate, but that's OK. First one's going to be data bar. Uh, the data bar, I really appreciate how they showed this, because they actually show you in pink up here. This is what they're talking about. So when I click on the data bar here, you'll notice there's a bunch of of things here. We have ability to set this to sides if we want to. Some people chuck it all into one side. Some people chuck it all into the other side. Some people just say, leave it on auto. Uh, you'll notice the comm radio. We can actually shrink these down if it bothers you, again, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, you also have radio volume indicators. You can turn this one on and off if it's muted or anything along those lines. You can even change what side the audio panel is. Uh, again, you can switch it over there. Personally, I like to keep it even, so I put it on the right for me, but everybody's a little bit different. You can also toss, again, if you want to put the transponder over there and make a lot of room. That is up to you how you want to kind of do. But the other option you're going to see is what they call fields. And the fields, of course, are going to be based on what you're going to have displayed at the top of the screen. Right now, I have three data fields. I have the name of the waypoint, I have my bearing, and I have my distance. But if you were to press the change button, you will notice you can now left click on these fields to tweak them. For example, let's say I don't want to have bearing. I can click on bearing and I can go ahead and select other options here. This is kind of fun because there's someone that we've never seen before in other systems. Uh, one thing you'll see is climb gradient. So if I'm climbing upwards, you can actually see what percentage of my climb I am doing. I have density altitude. Again, these visuals, all these are accurate numbers. So sometimes people will actually go cruise along with this screen on, and you have far too much information in front of you. I appreciate the fact that you can have a G meter because, you know, why not? But one of the cool things here, and I really appreciate this, is you have like high to ground level, Mach number, because, you know, I go that fast, kind of a thing like that. You have our next waypoint. You have your rat in here. You have your time on route. Uh, I really, really like this one because like ETA for me is pretty relevant. You also have what time it is, uh, should you desire. And I also appreciate the fact none of that's correct. But that's okay. You'll notice time of arrival, time on route. I can push that, and it'll switch it to that mode. Now, if I want to touch this page, I can go ahead and left click on it, and it's going to take me back to this one, which gives me the ability to do it. Now, unfortunately, like I said, oh, we can't tweak this enough yet. We're getting there. At some point, we'll have a little more control over it. But if we were rolling, you'd actually have an estimated time on route, should you desire to have that one. So I'm going to press back. Uh, next one, you have display. Surprise, we did this one already. The one difference you need to know about display, by the way, is you're going to notice here that we have the split option right here. The other button for that is located right up here in case. You can also change which side the PFD goes. Uh, you can put the map on the other side if that's something that you want to do. Again, you have the ability to turn your radios on and off. If you want just one, you can turn just one on one side. And there's so many different little tiny things that you can do. Again, zoom knob, if you want to reverse it, some people, again, it's up to you. Like I said, I don't change that too much. Sound I'm going to leave alone. It's not a lot going on here. Minimum is altitude alert. Units. Now, units are kind of interesting here because we have the standard Celsius as well in Fahrenheit, barometric pressure for folks who fly um, different countries than the United States, which again, hey, you know where I come from. You can change your weight. You can change your weight, uh, your flute. Fuel units as well. We have liters, pounds, again, depending on how you want to do it. Fuel economy, I love the fact that <laughs> <laughs> Something feels naughty about changing that unit for me, but I don't change it very often. Time, very straightforward. Uh, UTC, 12 hour, 24 hour. You can dial that in. Again, I've never needed to change that. Then, of course, map. A map is awesome, but to show you something real quick before I start going hard in this section, I'm going to go menu real quick, back to this page, grab my split page, go to my map page, and then come down here and press menu. Aha! So there are two different places where you can access map information. Now, the first one, of course, is going to be in that page we saw a minute ago, or you can actually come in here and make tweaks to the map directly. So for example, if I want to reduce all, like I could do least amount of detail, you can actually click on this if you want to kind of click and drag. Now it's unleashed. If I press back, you can see here that I've got very little information on this map. I only see other airports. If I were to go back to that menu again, I'd go ahead and drag this sucker again. You drag that with your finger. You can see I've got everything. Honestly, it's way too much information. Let's do uh, that one right there. Ugh, that's uh, not particularly pleasant. Let's try data two. Uh, of course, what I do, I push the wrong button every time. Oh, looks okay. I can work with that. And the other cool thing, too, is you have other options here, such as uh, setting your train so we can see what we're going to crash into. We can do weather. Don't have any. We can also turn on traffic if uh, we need to see that, because normally traffic would not be visible. Uh, bummer, we don't have all these other fun ones, but again, it's, it's what we get. You will also notice we have the setup page here, and this is the exact one that you saw before, including... Ah... Uh, 
that's so much better. <laughs> uh, the reason I turned this one on, of course, is that means where the plane is pointing is where the map is going, so to speak. Keep in mind, as always, if you can't click and drag for whatever reason, you can come over here and uh, use your mouse, and you can actually set what page again. The big one's going to control what page we're on. The little one's going to control what option that we're on right here. So what I'm going to do is go back. Oh, now I've done it. Uh, go back to map here. Terrain shading. You can turn this on or off. Um, this is just going to turn terrain on again to let you know what you're going to crash into. And again, you've got all your obstacle stuff. Uh, you've selected altitude intercept arc. These are pretty fun. They'll actually draw a left curved circle or well, just a curved circle in general that'll let you know where you're going to hit your specific altitude. I like that. And uh, when we get in the air, you can kind of see all these doodads going at once. For lines, you have a bunch of different choices, including a track vector, which is kind of cool. It'll let you know uh, sort of what you see, uh, distance or time, how far away, how long it'll take. Under traffic, uh, you can turn traffic data on. Again, we saw that on the other screen. We can dial in what distance the traffic becomes valid. We can dial in what distance the label appears. All these different components are going to be built into here. And of course, if you drag this little guy up at the top, you'll see we can get to the airport. And now the reason I like this is you can get really, really, really picky as far as what options you want to change. Now I can change the text. I don't do that. But if you go to Navid, you can turn on VORs. For example, if I don't want to look at NDBs or maybe I only want to look at NDBs, DBs, you can change the visibility of these directly. And again, they won't turn on until we get within that specific distance of them. Again, I can click and drag here. So intersections, I don't want to look at intersections. I'll shut them off. And you can actually see that they poof, all disappear. And again, this is a when you want to see them. So if I want to take a put this at five nautical miles, small text. And again, things that are going to be close enough will become visible for us. Crank that again. You have all of your airspace controls. Do you want to see specific ones? You'll notice we have some stuff with restricted MOAs. All these are going to be visible. I like the smart airspace option. We don't get it. We have weather. I can turn it on, including next rad, radar coverage, things we don't have a lot of. User waypoints. If I had any user waypoints, which I do not, uh, you can turn these all on and off depending on what it is you need to see. And again, you can quickly scroll between those map setup options very quickly by pressing that button. So I'm going to go ahead and press back a few times. I'll bring me back to the screen. So what I'm going to do now is head over to my waypoint page. So we have no en route charts here. So waypoints. And of course, I can pick a waypoint. Uh, for example, again, uh, lovely Hartford is the center of not really. So I'm going to push this one. If you press the menu option here, you just have a quick sort of pop-up. And one of the cool things here is if you click on the show map button, it'll actually highlight where that particular waypoint is. It's kind of handy. I don't know. I sort of like it. Maybe it is just for me. But again, everybody's a little different in that regard. We go to the flight plan page, of course. Um, you're not going to have a lot of controls in your menu options here. Uh, one thing you'll see here is you can select an approach. So like if we're going into Hartford kind of a thing here, we have a couple different approaches. Uh, we can do the RNAV, which is the correct thing to you via Lomas. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and load the approach. And that's kind of Pop that in there again. We're not supposed to be flying instruments. <laughs> Got to keep that in mind. Aha, Max demonstrated crosswind. Demonstrated is the keyword here. Anyway, a couple of things here that you want to know, though, is when you are working with flight plans, you can actually come in here and change this to make it make a little bit more sense. And of course, you can go in here and kind of tweak some of these things. One of the cool things here is you can actually change the data field. So for example, if I wanted to change uh, the, uh, let's say, estimated time of arrival, if I click that, it'll give me the ETA plus the leg distance. So again, you can change those, which I think is awesome. That's based on this, by the way. So let's go ahead and head over to our next page, which is traffic. The important thing to know about the traffic page here is um, you have an altitude filter. And the reason I like this is you can say, don't, I don't care. Just tell me everybody. Tell me things that seem important. Tell me things that are below me. Tell me things that are below, above me. Again, the key thing that I like to do here is I like to do unrestricted. That's just me, though. Swinging so over to the info page here. Uh, not a lot to see. Again, this is all pretty... I don't know the best way to describe it. Actually, let me go back to it so you can go ahead and see that menu option. Nothing really here. And now the reason there's nothing here is this is just satellites. So, cool. And of course, if we go last but not least, we have the engine page. And I like the engine page specifically because when you bring it up, you'll see this all shrinks down so that we can take a look at what our engine is. Obviously, it's pretty cool. We covered Lean Assist in the other video. And of course, if you push the menu button, you'll notice there are no specific options for this particular page. Uh, one thing I do like, though, is the fuel calc. Uh, one thing I forget to tell people is you got to make sure you reset this. And if you click this, you have to say how much fuel is remaining. Uh, one of the nice tricks here is if you go up here, you can actually just see I've got about 24 gallons remaining. So if I do 24 and press Enter, you'll notice that it automatically calculates my 45-hour endurance. So I could sit on this runway a very long time if I needed to. Keep in mind, by the way, the airplane uh, would not tolerate that. Eventually, you start burning a little bit of oil. And uh, with the burning of oil, you'd have other issues. And eventually, you wouldn't get good compression. It just would be pretty messy. So as you can see, there are a lot of features of this particular tool. So what I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to get us in the air here. And uh, the reason I want to get us in the air is uh, just to kind of show you what happens uh, with the data fields in just a moment. Fortunately for us, uh, we got a relatively easy runway to get in the air from, yeah, yeah, it's a grass runway, whatever. 
Go ahead and give this thing a nice little push. Get us up there. We can see we're doing about 17 gallons per hour. Not bad. Not bad at all. Press back a couple times. Kind of reset that page. And I'm just going to let the plane kind of sneak upwards there. I'm going to take my nice left turn. And you will observe, exactly like I promised, that we now have ETE because we are making our way towards our destination there. Now, one thing I did not mention or I hinted at in the other previous video was do you see this little tiny pink line that if I take a turn, see it starts to expand? That's your standard rate turn. So by the way, if you want a standard right turn, you've got to double check to make sure you've got the correct amount of this. Now, if I go ahead and put myself a little bit more of a tilt, that looks pretty, too much, too much. Ooh, high RPM. I'm doing too many things at one time here. And you can see there's my standard rate turn when it gets to that point. So let's go ahead and level this off now that I put myself on the wrong course to get to my particular destination. Come spin back that way. Come spin back that way. I can go ahead and snap on the automatic pilot here. Oh, it's not really good place or good use of the automatic pilot but um yeah good enough kind of a thing like that let's go ahead and push navigation mode here so at least we can go in the correct direction towards hartford but one of the cool things is is like i was mentioning a few moments ago is that when you want to edit things like this uh you know edit your data fields and all that let's go venue how can we can go through all this again go all the way to the bottom go to my setup page press my enter boop just like that Go to my display, get my data bar here. We had all of our fields, remember, a few minutes ago. I can now click this, and um, let's say I want to change this one. <laughs> See how it all works? Is that not the goofiest thing you've ever seen? Now, again, some people like to have a lot of fun with stuff like this. I can do Mach 0.16. Look at that. Now I can see my GPS altitude. You can see how much gas I have left. That's wrong. Uh, you can see my G meter there. I'm uh, pointing uh, one, uh, one. That's pretty good. See how this number doesn't look right? Surprise! It's all based on what fuel tank you're on. Obviously, don't shut the engine off. Well, it's not recommended in any flight. But what you'll observe is my fuel capacity will change based on what fuel tank I'm actually on. So that's just kind of one of those little things. You can see I'm climbing at a 12 degree gradient. So if I wanted to descend at a 3% gradient, for example, I actually have the ability to do that. You even know how much gas you're going to have or when you cross over that particular component there. It's all really, really cool stuff. And I don't know. My mind says this is a little goofy, the fact that I can just sort of open that up and take a look at that while I'm cruising. But again, that's just kind of one of the fun things about this particular unit and why it works. Now, the last thing we're going to see today, my last, 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 last thing, I swear, is when I open this up, you observe we are indeed tracking up uh, as opposed to uh, tracking north. And again, uh, there's the right way and the wrong way. This is the right way. All the other ways are the wrong way. Now, do what works for you. And uh, the other thing, of course, is when you're navigating around an airport, Tracking north is actually a really good thing, but when you're in the air, it's just more intuitive. If you point the plane where the actual map is pointing, I don't know, it's just me. But other than that, this is a fantastic little system, and I hope you've enjoyed our little journey as we take a look at all the different components on it, and it should inspire you to give it a try yourself. Enjoy.